Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar today. Today's session is called Zero Emission Vehicle Awareness Series 3, the EV Landscape. My name is Danielle Fisher, and I am the Lead Event Manager for Eco Canada, and I will be moderating this webinar today. Before we start, there are a few housekeeping guidelines for today's session to ensure that everyone can enjoy and participate in the webinar effectively. All participants are muted, so please check your audio settings to ensure that you can hear us properly. If you're experiencing any technical issues, please use the question box and select Eco Canada, the organizer, and I will do all that I can to resolve the issue. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be made available on demand to you within the next 24 hours. Everyone who registered for the webinar will receive an email with a link to the video. Any questions that you have about the presentation or today's topic can be submitted through the chat box or question box. We will have dedicated time after the presentation to answer any questions from the audience. Finally, we really want to know what you think about our webinars and how we can keep improving. You'll be sent a short survey after the webinar ends. Please let us know what you think or if you have any comments or suggestions about the webinar. I'd like to introduce Calvin Leckelt, Program Manager at Municipal Climate Change Action Center, Sustainability Services at Alberta Municipalities. Calvin joined the Municipal Climate Change Action Center in Alberta Municipalities in 2017 and currently leads the Action Center's Renewable Energy energy efficiency and electrical vehicle re related rebate programs for municipalities across Alberta to reduce energy use and emissions. Over to you, Calvin. Hello, everyone. My name is Calvin Leckel, the Program Manager with Alberta Municipalities and the Municipal Climate Change Action Center. Welcome to the third and final entry in the three-part webinar series about the Canadian EV landscape in 2023 and beyond. These webinars have been developed and are being presented by the Municipal Climate Change Action Centre on behalf of EcoCanada with funding support from Natural Resources Canada's Zero Emission Vehicle Awareness Initiative. We recognize and appreciate EnerCan's support in making these, this webinar series a reality. Before we begin, we'd like to make a land and treaty acknowledgement. This presentation is being delivered from Edmonton, Alberta on Treaty 6 territory. The Municipal Climate Change Action Centre respectfully acknowledges that we live, work and play on the traditional and ancestral territories of many First Nations, Indigenous, Métis and Inuit peoples. We recognize that what we call Alberta is the traditional and ancestral territory of many peoples presently subject to treaties 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, and the six regions of the Métis Nation of Alberta. We respect the courageous and resilient community leadership of Indigenous peoples of all ages, knowledge keepers, and elders who are still with us today and, who's, uh, and those who have gone before us. We make this acknowledgement as an act of rec reconciliation, gratitude, and commitment to pursuing an inclusive, collaborative, and respectful path towards building strong communities. For those who are not familiar with the Action Centre, we were established in 2009 as a collaborative initiative between Alberta municipalities, formerly the AUMA, the rural municipalities of Alberta, and the government of Alberta. The Action Centre provides funding, technical assistance, and education to Alberta municipalities, nonprofits, and schools in addressing climate change, including a variety of electric vehicle initiatives for municipal governments. Since 2009, we've managed a variety of programs that have made a significant impact throughout Alberta, including work with 389 unique participants to complete 839 projects catalyzing 158 million in energy cost lifetime savings. As for EcoCanada, EcoCanada's vision is to build the world's leading environmental workplace. EcoCanada seeks to help environmental workers succeed at each step of their career journey. To do this, EcoCanada has developed several programs tailored to individuals at different stages of their careers. To learn more, you can visit EcoCanada's website at eco.ca. 
Looking at this webinar's agenda, there are seven key topics that we will be addressing. First, transportation emissions in Canada, the pillars of EV uptake, EV policy in Canada, EV adoption rates, government and manufacturer targets, EV incentive programs in Canada, and Canada's advantages in the EV transition. Environment and Climate Change Canada determined that 24% of Canada's emissions come from the transportation sector, making it the second highest emitting sector in the country after oil and gas. Tackling transportation emissions is a significant challenge in Canada's goal to be net zero by 2050. There are a variety of solutions that are needed to overcome this challenge, including broad electrification of transportation, uh, of, of passenger and freight transportation, expanded public transit, active transportation, increased urban density, and more. All of these transportation modes are needed, but for this presentation, we're only going to focus on electric vehicles as a means of reducing transportation emissions. So this graph shows the breakdown of emissions in a variety of transportation modes that has a clear overall uptrend since 1990. Decreasing emissions in each category is an ongoing challenge, particularly in the heavy duty, rail, aviation, and marine applications where electrification is more challenging. These vehicle categories are likely to leverage a combination of battery electric, hydrogen, and sustainable liquid fuels to decarbonize, depending on the scale and use case of those vehicles. Of all the vehicle categories, the focus of this webinar, again, is on the electrification of passenger cars, SUVs, and light trucks, which make up roughly half of Canada's transportation-related emissions. Although EVs may not be perfect in every application, we'll see throughout this webinar that electric vehicle technology is clearly here to stay and will make a significant impact in the passenger vehicle space into the future. So although Canada has high transportation related emissions, 80% of our electricity comes from non-emitting sources. This presents a great opportunity for decreasing transportation emissions through passenger vehicle electrification. Electricity emissions vary drastically from one province to the next, next, but as my colleague Logan mentioned in the previous presentations, EVs are significantly more efficient than internal combustion engine vehicles, which leads to emission reductions regardless of the province you charge your EV in. Even in provinces with more carbon intensive electricity grids like Alberta, Saskatchewan, and some of the maritime provinces, EVs still reduce emissions. Luckily, upstream em emissions from electricity generation in these provinces is not static and will decrease as more renewable energy, energy storage, energy efficiency, and carbon capture uh, capacity is rolled out. This Alberta-specific example, example can demonstrate how upstream EV emissions will change with the changing electricity grid. On the left, is a 2019 Toyota Corolla that will emit approximately 160 grams of CO2 per kilometer, compared to a 2019 Chevy Bolt charging from Alberta's electricity grid prior to 2019 in 2020 to 2023 and into the future in 2024. The emissions from the Chevy Bolt have already, in 2023, decreased significantly in a few short years as Alberta's grid is phasing out coal, transitioning to predominantly gas-fired electricity, while also adding to our wind power capacity and adding a lot of large-scale solar generation. The pace of this decrease is not linear, but is expected to continue with Alberta's coal phase-out being ahead of its scheduled 2030 date. These values are based on figures from Alberta's Carbon Emission Offset Handbook between 2018 and 2023. The 2024 figures are only an estimate as the electricity emissions, uh, electricity factors uh, for emissions in Alberta have not yet been updated. To, to reach widespread and sustained EV uptake in Canada uh, that will help Canada reduce emissions, we need to look at a variety of factors that will influence EV uptake rates. The core factors are identified here as key pillars to EV uptake price. EVs are currently more expensive than internal combustion engine vehicles. 
a competitive upfront cost to complement the lower operating costs is needed while manufacturers can achieve scale and drive prices down to equivalent or below internal combustion engine vehicle prices. This is where provincial and federal rebate programs can really help. Supply. EVs use batteries uh, that the batteries themselves use a variety of metals and minerals. The supply chains for these materials is still growing, so vehicle supply is more limited compared to internal combustion engine vehicles. This is where policies like provincial or national sales mandates support to ensure there are vehicles available for consumers and in greater quantities in the future. Charging infrastructure. So charging infrastructure is still being deployed across the country. Uh, there are certainly still gaps that can delay and suppress demand for EVs. The lack of access to charging infrastructure will certainly impact uptake targets. Demand. Demand is outweighing supply, at least in Alberta. Uh, despite the high upfront costs, despite the infrastructure gaps, and despite market education still being in its infancy. And finally, education. Education initiatives are being rolled out, but general market education still needs to grow with misconceptions corrected, which is a goal of this webinar series. A strategy for each pillar is needed for widespread adoption, and government policy will influence, influence each of these pillars. The federal government in Canada is actively pursuing action on all of these pillars, as we'll see throughout this webinar. So to understand the EV landscape currently and where it's going, we need to understand the EV-related policy in Canada. Much of that policy is included in the federal government's 2030 Emissions Reduction Plan. One of the key policy pillars is the light duty vehicle sales mandate to reach 100% of new sales being zero emitting by 2035. This is an ambitious target that will drive significant change towards EVs, bring in more supply, kickstart the used EV market, and should bring downward pressure on prices. The 2035 target is paired with interim milestones that we'll cover in an upcoming slide. The sales mandate will be paired with a credit compliance system for automakers and is scheduled to come into effect in 2026. The 2030 emissions reduction plan also includes targets of reaching 35% of medium and heavy duty vehicle sales being zero emitting by 2030. This is not a sales mandate at the moment, only a target. That being said, also included in the plan is a commitment to develop a medium and heavy duty vehicle zero emission uh, vehicle regulation that will require 100% uh, zero emission vehicle sales by 2040, but only for a select subset of vehicle types based on feasibility. Rebate funding is available for vehicles, charging infrastructure and education initiatives. And we'll look into these in a bit more detail in an upcoming slide. Tax incentives are also available for all businesses that manufacture zero emission technologies. So in December 2022, the Government of Canada announced proposed regulations that set zero emission vehicle sales targets for new light duty cars, SUVs and trucks. The regulation will require that at least 20% of new vehicles sold in Canada will be zero emission by 2026 at least 60% by 2030 and 100% by 2035. The intent of the sales mandate is to ensure manufacturers and vehicle importers are providing access to electric vehicles for Canadians. Simil similar policies have been used successfully at the provincial level in both British Columbia and Quebec to ensure supply can more appropriately match demand. Prospective EV drivers in provinces without sales mandates have experienced several year long wait times and artificial price fixing from dealerships due to low supply and high demand. Other jurisdictions with sales mandates include the European Union, the United Kingdom, and several American states. The sales mandate will certainly help make progress towards these targets, but are we on track to meet these targets currently? Well, uh, as of Q3 2022, just over 70,000 battery electric vehicles were registered in Canada, 
representing 6.1% of all registrations. Although we're seeing exponential year-over-year -year growth in registrations since 2017, as shown by the graph, there's still a lot of work to do to reach the government's goal of 20% new vehicle sales by 2026. The sales mandate goes into effect in 2026 and is crucial to increasing the pace of change and meeting the following targets in 2030 and 2035. This graph does not show any stats from plug-in hybrid vehicles, uh, and although it, the, the graph does not show quarterly stats from Alberta, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland and Labrador, EV registrations from these jurisdictions are included in the national totals. So some jurisdictions have had sales mandates and other EV-friendly policies in place for several, several, year, several years and are seeing much higher adoption than the national average. For example, in BC, electric registrations reached 13% of all new vehicle sales from Q1 to Q3 in 2022. Other market watchers are expecting to see near 20% registrations for the fourth quarter of 2022 in BC. So this shows that a combination of policy and incentives can accelerate the adoption of EVs and that jurisdictions that were early movers will likely reach many of the national interim targets well in advance of other provinces. A national approach will certainly help those other provinces catch up. And again, this graph does not include any stats from plug-in hybrid vehicles. With plug-in hybrid vehicles, the electric share during this same time frame actually increases to 15.6% of all registrations. So it's clear that EV uptake is not consistent from one province to the next. This was also evident in the first provincial and territorial zero emission vehicle scorecard completed by Electric Mobility Canada and partners in 2022. This scorecard measures progress based on EV specific policies and programs that impact price, supply, demand, charging infrastructure, and education. Many of the same, which are all many of the same pillars uh, of uptake that we described previously. Most provinces fall into the getting started or building momentum categories, with BC being a global leader and Quebec not being far behind. Many of the federal government's policies, uh, as shown in the previous slide, are aiming to bridge this gap. So we covered what the government is doing in regard to EV policy. But how does that compare to the world's largest vehicle manufacturers? Well, this table shows the light duty EV models available in Canada from the biggest automakers. Those near the top of the table have a variety of options currently and have more models on the way in 2023 and 2024. There are clear leaders in this table while several other big name companies are still lagging behind. But really, governments are not the only ones setting ambitious EV targets. As you'll see from this table, the biggest manufacturers are setting targets to sell EVs as large portions of their product lines, ranging from 40 to 100% of sales between 2030 and 2035. This includes three of the top four brands in Canada with GM, Ford, and Hyundai. So shifting gears into funding opportunities, there are a variety of funding opportunities available federally and provincially across Canada. Based on the attendance from previous webinars in this series, we will cover funding opportunities available federally and some that are specific to Alberta. So starting on the left with vehicles, the Incentives for Zero Emission Vehicles Program, or ISEV, is a point of sale rebate at the dealership it does not require an application or funding agreement to get started and is specifically for light duty passenger vehicles uh, with rebates up to five thousand dollars per vehicle budget 2022 actually topped up the ISEV program with another 1.5 billion in new funding next is the incentives for zero uh, for for medium heavy duty zero emission vehicles again another point of sale rebate uh, for vehicles like garbage trucks, up to $200,000 per vehicle. And for municipal governments in Alberta only, 
the Municipal Climate Change Action Center offers the Electric Vehicles for Municipalities program, which can actually stack with the other two federal programs. Uh, and in the context of a passenger vehicle, a municipality could receive up to $19,000 off uh, each new light duty fleet vehicle. As for infrastructure, most uh, the most notable program is the $400 million plus zero emission vehicle infrastructure program from Natural Resources Canada. Enercan also provides a portion of funding to delivery organizations uh, that run EV charging programs at the local level. So some of these delivery organizations include ourselves with our electric vehicle charging program, Green Economy Canada, Pollution Probe, and more. And finally, with education, Enercan runs the Zero Emission Vehicle Awareness Initiative. manufacturing and parts industry, along with an educated and skilled workforce. Canada has strong ESG performance and standards, has access to large markets in North America and many global uh, trade agreements. Canada has strong battery research and development teams and supportive government policy to date, as we've covered in previous slides. So understanding those advantages and looking at the international context, Bloomberg New Energy Finance actually ranks Canada second only to China in the global lithium ion battery supply chain. Canada received high scores in each of the five key themes, including availability and the supply of key raw materials, manufacturing of battery cells and components, local demand for electric vehicles and energy storage, infrastructure innovation and industry, as well as environmental, social, and corporate government governance uh, considerations. So the global business community is also seeing that Canada is a strong place to invest, considering this list of EV battery supply chain investments since 2020, including multi-billion dollar investments by Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis. The $5 billion Stellantis LG Gigafactory alone is expected to have a production capacity of up to 45 gigawatt hours annually. In addition to this list, Umicore has committed to building a $1.5 billion battery manufacturing uh, plant in eastern Ontario starting in 2023. So the total investments in this time frame are valued at approximately $14.5 billion. A report from Clean Energy Canada found that the country has the potential to build a domestic EV battery supply chain that supports 250,000 jobs and adds $48 billion to the Canadian economy annually. These jobs would be in mineral extraction, battery materials, cell manufacturing, and EV assembly, and does not include any other induced jobs. Under this scenario, Canada would produce over 1.5 million EVs annually. So to achieve this full potential, the report recommends that Canada further invests in new battery material, uh, in new battery materials, further invests in battery recycling, attracts more battery cell manufacturing facilities, and adds more crit critical mineral mines. So that brings us to the end of today's webinar. Uh, thank you everyone for attending this final entry in the three-part Zero Emission Vehicle Awareness Initiative series presented by Eco Canada and the Municipal Climate Change Action Center. I hope you found it 
uh, helpful. And for those who may have missed the previous episodes, you can find recordings on Eco Canada's website, eco.ca. If you have any questions regarding the topics covered in this presentation, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kelvin. That was a wonderful webinar. Um, we do have a couple questions. Uh, there's this first one from Dan, and he's wondering, can you address the topic and misconceptions of batteries, such as price to replace batteries and critical metal storages? Shortages, sorry. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Dan. Uh, just to confirm everyone can hear me OK? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not sure exactly the misconceptions that you may be referring to, but um, as it relates to uh, uh, the price to replace batteries, uh, it's a significant cost. Really, just really like like replacing an engine for an engine combustion, combustion engine vehicle is a significant cost. Um, um, the difference, difference, difference between an and an uh, ice vehicle, ice vehicle as it relates to replacing your battery, your battery engine, engine uh, is that your battery at end of life is likely to still have a lot of value in it. Um, Generally, as, as Logan talked about in a previous presentation, uh, EV batteries will degrade at about uh, half a percent to maybe one percent uh, per year, uh, and, and that rate is declining as as um, battery uh, batteries just become more sophisticated in these vehicles. So even if at, at the more conservative rate, we let's call it one percent per year, uh, after 20 years, it's reasonable to assume that that battery would still have 80 percent of its capacity left. Um, so. As compared to disposing of an engine, there's very little value left in that. Um, so I would anticipate as the market becomes a little bit more uh, mature and, and sophisticated that there'll become more options for uh, replacing that battery or sort of rather disposing of that battery um, that might not be just immediately recycling it. Maybe it's repurposing that battery for uh, other use cases outside of the vehicle. So. Uh, hopefully that trickles down to uh, the end consumers uh, to provide a little bit of relief uh, in situations where they may need to uh, replace the, the battery in their vehicle. Uh, and as it relates to critical met, uh, metal shortages, um, yeah, you're right. That's definitely something that's taking place right now um, that is limiting the capacity of the supply chain to, to match demand. Um, that being said, uh, and I touched on this a little bit in the in the presentation, um, there's quite a bit happening in North America, at least from a policy standpoint, that will actually bring a good amount of investment to um, to North America and and Canada specifically, that will help uh, you know develop more mines that can bridge that critical metal uh, supply gap. But obviously, there's pretty um, fairly long lead times to getting something like that up and running. So I would anticipate in the next handful of years, we're still going to see um, some supply chain issues as it relates to EVs. So I hope that answers your question. Great, um, we'll just give it a few more seconds here to see if there's any more questions that are coming through, but it doesn't look like there is. So wonderful presentation, Kelvin, um, very informative. I just wanted to let everyone know that this recording will be in their inbox within 24 hours. You can also reach out to me at dfisher at eco.ca if you are missing the first two in this series and I can send them right over to you. Thanks so much, Calvin. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And I hope you learned a lot about EVs today. Bye-bye, thank you. Thanks everyone, bye-bye.